Welcome back, guys and gals. Sorry Harley is indisposed right now. This is Harley's daddy. Today's video, we're going to be going over some kinks. We're going to be ranking them from least favorite to favorites. We got the idea from Loving BDSM. We're going to link their channel down below. Just a disclaimer that not all the kinks that were listed on their list will be listed on our list. So without further ado, here's our list. So the first bit kink that we're going to be reviewing is breath play. Now, this is something that I like. You do it every time. What are you talking about? Um, uh, specifically choking, um, things like that. This is a huge turn on for me. So this is definitely something like daddy said, uh, we do every time. Yeah, every time. Second one is breathing kink. A lot of people enjoy it. They find a thrill from it, but it's not always the safest when you're playing with others, unless you truly trust your partner. Um, third one is bondage and shibari. Bondage is always fun if you're done safely. As you can see, some of the tying knots on her shirt, which is from Little From Big, which we'll link their description as well if you'd like to buy a onesie similar to this one. Uh, it's always good to play with others when you have a trust with your partner. Uh, this is something that we both partake in um, on a regular basis. It isn't necessarily every play session that we have, but a majority of them will have some type of bondage or restraining involved. Um, the next one is blood play. Um, for me specifically, um, this isn't something that I'm into. I tend to shy away from anything that involves um, most bodily fluids, such as blood. Um, but Daddy, what do you stand for? Well, with blood play, there's two different styles of it. There is the drinking style of it, and then there's the wearing style of it. And then there's a third style that people don't understand too much because they get turned away by the thought of it, and some females do not enjoy it because it causes more cramps as well having intercourse on their menstrual cycle. So sometimes it's fun to do. It helps some ladies with their monthly cramps. Um, the next one is knife play. This is a huge turn on for me. Um, I've done it in the past, um, but it's something that daddy is a little more leery on um, just because it can be dangerous um, depending on the person. Um, if they have a shaky hand, then running a knife or cutting someone along their body um, can cause cuts in the wrong areas, which then leads to disastrous consequences. And as well, with your sensitive nerve damage, sometimes a sharp blade against your skin, or even a dull blade, can send you through excruciating amounts of pain that you have to stop a session. Knife play is fun to do, and done right can be very sensual. The next one is possessiveness. Um, I think I can speak for Daddy and I both. Um, this is something that we don't want in our dynamic. Um, we're not possessive people. Obviously, we're poly, um, meaning we have more than one partner. Um, so possessiveness doesn't fit into our type of dynamic. Uh, so the next one is consensual non-consent. Now... This is something that I'm willing to do with the right partner. Um, it's something that I need to be able to have an extreme amount of trust with the person that I'm playing with. And it is something that I most of the time won't engage in. Yeah, it's only... it's. The selected times that she would um, 
she agrees with it to a degree. She enjoys it through some of her punishments, but not all the time. The next one, of course, as you can tell, is something that she highly enjoys and highly loves is caregiver and little dynamic. As you can see, she is a little, wearing a onesie, and she calls me daddy. So, this is a high yes on our categories. And the next one is chastity. Now, I've done this with a few of my previous submissives. They do enjoy a good chastity device locked up to be under control and being a key holder. Uh, for me specifically, um, this is something that Daddy and I haven't gotten into as of yet, but it's something that has always been a curiosity for me. So maybe later down the road, it would be something that we would be able to partake in. Um, the next one is servitude. Um, this, I like doing it. Um, I like giving service to another person. Um, with Daddy and I, yes, there are points where servitude is a thing in our dynamic, but for the most part, it's something that we don't always do. Um, the next one is gags. So for me, this could be like ball gags or bits, like um, um, bar gags. I enjoy it to a certain extent. Um, Daddy previously mentioned that I have um, nerve issues. Um, so I have um, nerve pain throughout my whole body. So having a gag in my mouth, um, depend like no matter what the type is, there is a huge issue for me in the sense that if it's in for too long, um, then my face starts to go numb and then a scene would end up having to um, end because of that. Uh, the next one is impact play. So that could be whipping, spanking, um, using floggers, canes, paddles, crops, any type of impact on the body. Um, now, I'm not a huge uh, masochist, um, but I do enjoy a spanking or um, flogger being used on my body uh, once in a while. And of course, as she knows, I'm a big sadist. I do enjoy inflicting pain to a degree to an agreeable party. So impact play is always a high one on our list for any session. So yeah. And the next one would be humiliation play, public, private, and degradation. Mm -hmm. Now, in everyone's dynamic, there's always a small, small portion of it that will be in re revolving around humiliation. Because some people will enjoy it, some people may not. Some people only enjoy it during a play session. Being called a name or being degraded, called something like they're not worthy or stuff like that. Some people can get off with it, some people can't. Um, for us, this is something that has happened in the past and that we like to participate in every once in a while. Um, it's not something that happens every single time and really, it rarely happens now. No, it happens almost every session. Well, depending on what you <laughs> it consider. It depends on every session. Yeah. Um, so the next one is sensory play. Uh, so this is blindfolds, um, sensory deprivation, um, things along that line. Um, this is definitely something that I'm into. Um, we will use like blindfolds um, sometimes depending on what the scene is that we're engaging in. Um, it's a great form of foreplay as well. Yeah. So it also helps enlighten the mood helps everyone get comfortable, get people aroused, so you're not just starting into a session freaking the neck, freaking your partner out. You always want to make sure they get into the, the space correctly and also well lubricated. Uh, the next one is kneeling. Um, so for me, um, this 
can tie into my servitude aspect. Um, I, because of um, my nerve issues, I can't stand kneeling for long periods of time. Um, so this is something this is something that doesn't necessarily happen all the time. Um, but it is something that happens once in a while and that we like doing. Mm -hmm. Next one is discipline. As you heard before, with the bondage and sensory play and impact play, we enjoy a good discipline session, but with the right discipline session, you must, and I will not repeat this enough, is you must have the correct aftercare after a discipline session. If you don't, then you will make your submissive go into a sub-drop, which is one of the worst feelings that a submissive could ever go through. Um, so the next one is uh, slave, master, mistress dynamic. Um, we originally started as a uh, master and slave. Um, so it is something that we are both, both interested in. I have been in uh, master-slave type dynamics before, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, what about you, Daddy? Well, I've, being in this community for a while now, I've been through many different roles, and I enjoy um, a good master-slave situation because there is so much you can do with the submissive and also what you can do with the slave. With the slave aspect, it brings in the CNC concept. The CNC concept is what's highly connected with a slave's position. A submissive can be CNC, but not a slave. It's a little bit more confusing, but in the aspects of fairness, it's something that everyone does enjoy once in a while. Um, so the next one is pet play. Um, this is something that I have engaged in in the past, and I like participating in it every once in a while, um, but it's just not something that really is in our dynamic. Yeah, well, she does like to be called Kitten every so often, hence the name Harley Kitten. She does have a set of tails and ears that she will wear once in a while, but the tail she finds a little bit painful because she's not used to it just yet. The next one is being a brat. Um, I'm a huge brat. Yes, folk, she folk. is. Um, she learns the hard way that being a brat can get more discipline out of it and punishments. So I have always been a brat and always will be a brat. So this is something that will be in our dynamic, but there is always a fine line and I know not to cross that line. Now, the next one would be cock clearing and cock holding. Now, being in the community for quite a while now, uh, I've done both. It's actually, I've been bull for the cock holding and this one over here likes to cock clear. So it is something that we both have done in the past. It's very unique. And it also ties in with a couple other kinks of being voyeurs and exhibitionists. Another one which ties into being the caregiver and little dynamic, which would be da dominant daddy and little girl, or dominant daddy, little boy, or dominant mummy, little girl, dominant mummy, little boy. As you can see, being a little, and Donna and Daddy, we enjoy this very much. Um, the next one is collars and wearing a leash. Um, so I have a collar. Um, I wear it as often as possible. I don't necessarily wear it all the time. You gotta correct yourself on that. That's a day collar. Well, it's not yeah. a play collar. It's a day collar. Uh, my plate collars will only call come on when we have a scene. Um, as for wearing a leash, um, this is something that I like doing every once in a while, um, but it just all depends on what the situation is and if um, the situation is permitting that type of kink. Yeah, and some submissives enjoy wearing it 
public and taking a submissive for a walk in a park wearing a leash and collar is pretty much fun to do or going to what we have here in Canada is the everything to do a sex show going through the event for a full day with a submissive on a leash is actually kind of nice to do mm -hmm. um so being a dom um and this is for a femdom um now i have dominant tendencies to a certain extent but i identify more as a submissive but this is some but this type of role is something that i will that I am interested in when the situation is right. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is subbing. Well, I'm a submissive. It's kind of a given. Uh, this is a huge uh, turn on for me and just being of service and being submissive towards the right type of partner. And I specify the right type because I'm not submissive with everyone. Um, if I feel that I can trust you and that, and I feel safe and secure with you, then of course I'm going to be more submissive towards you. Um, but I'm just not a submissive, or I'm not subbing to just about anyone. So the next one is voyeurism. As and you stated, it connects in with cockolding and cockqueering, as well as exhibitionism. Those three, or actually four, technically all go together. Uh, people like to watch a session, like this one over here. She loves to watch. And some people like to put on a show, which, as you can tell, I do enjoy putting up a good show once in a while. Those two we do enjoy doing once in a while. Um, so vo vo voyeurism is the watching and exhibitionism is the um, performing. Uh, the next one is pegging. Um, now, <laughs> as you can tell, we don't do it to each other because I have a dominant and a top. So when we have additional play partners in the bedroom, I will show her and let her use one on the partner we bring in which can be fun for her because she gets to enjoy something that she doesn't normally do and she's done this now for the past three yeah three partners we brought in um this is something that i enjoyed and that i carried on from my previous relationships um so having the opportunity to be able to do it with our other partners is a great treat every once in a while um so the next one is temperature play now this can be hot or cold um this is something that i enjoy quite a bit um but i know there is that fine line and um, especially with my nerve issues. So we don't partake in it very often um, just to avoid having me be in, being in excruciating amounts of pain. Yeah, and the next one also ties in with uh, temperature play as well, which is actually wax play. Now, we do partake in wax play. Um, we actually will soon be releasing in our store um, a very good product that is safe for everyone it's a soy based candle which is a low temperature so it's a very low risk of being burnt which we'll also be posting a demo video of how it shall be played correctly and it shows you that the temperature can be ranging from the higher spectrum the closer you are to the body to the cooler spectrum by the time you reach the, the top part of your body and the next one which is <laughs> We've already spoke about this one before with a few other ones, is the threesome and group category. We do tend to have a good few, three, few threesome once in a while. Um, we haven't tried to force them just yet because haven't found the right couple to play with. Yeah. But it is fun to play with once in a while. Um, and just an addition to that is um, while we both enjoy it and we do have other partners, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're always having threesomes. Um, a lot of our partners actually 
um, that we've had in the past have been separated. Um, so daddy will have another partner and then I will have a, another partner, which is separate from the one that yes. he has. Um, the next one is marks and bruises. Um, just because of my um, personal situation, this isn't something that we engage in too often, um, just because I can't have a lot of marks or bruises showing, but every once in a while um, it does happen and it's because I've let it happen and it's something that we both enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now with me, I don't take marks on my body due to the fact I have a professional life that I have to present myself in a professional manner. So I enjoy giving marks and she does have a few still on her arm for biting, for learning the hard way. Um, the next one is um, overt displays of DS in public. Um, for me specifically, this isn't something that I'm into um, for the sole reason that the public cannot consent to what they are seeing. Um, I will wear like my day collar out in public, but it looks like a regular necklace. So if someone were to question it, it's more of like, oh, that's a really nice necklace. Where did you get it? Instead of the whole collar with the O-ring or D-ring. Yeah. So now, with that part being said, it's like we will partake in a little bit while we are at the Everything to a Sex Show. Mm -hmm. Or other kink events. Or any kink mm -hmm. events. There is a couple good uh, houses here that have adult play to it, which we will also send a link in the description if you are ever in Toronto and you want to find them. Uh, it is the Oasis Aqua Lounge and M4. They are closed now during pandemic, but they will soon be opening up once everything gets reopened. And then the next one is one of her favorite yet least favorite things, <laughs> nipple clamps or clothespins. This is also related to being a masochist and a sadist and enjoying pain. Now, the nipples are very sensitive for some people and can bring overstimulation and overjoy. So we enjoy using nipple clamps and clothespins for the fact of stimulation. And it's also a sensory tool too. The next one is overstimulation, um, organism denial and control, um, and other types of like play dealing with um, sensations. So um, overstimulation happens every single time that we play. Mm -hmm. So this is something that uh, I am extremely into and daddy likes giving me the opportunity to experience. Um, orgasm denial and control is 100% in our dynamic. It's something we both enjoy. Um, so for me, um, this is something that is in my rules. It's built into Pardon. our dynamic. And of course, with the over sensory, over stimulus dynamic part of it, she tends to love the new toys we had just bought from one of our favorite vendors, which is not sponsoring this video whatsoever. We have reviewed these products already. Um, we can put a link in the description for you if you want to try and take a look at them. It's the, the company's name is Love Sense. It has fantastic Bluetooth controlled devices for you and your partner. Um, males, females, whatever gender you prefer as, we're not going to be those typical people that will shame you or talk about something that's wrong, but we are open and trust me, it is one of the best toys that you will invest in if you have a chance. They are not cheap. They're a big company based out of the States. You can buy them on Amazon, which is decent because it comes in a discreet box so no one knows what you're buying. Mm -hmm. The next one is being photographed and filmed. Well, we're here on YouTube. We're here on YouTube. So being filmed, we're okay with it. Um, as for being photographed, um, 
she was nervous up till a couple years ago when why well, I went to the everything to do with sex show and we won a free photo shoot for her and it was a boudoir boudoir, boudoir style um, photo shoot so that opportunity gave me a chance to get more comfortable in my own skin so now we will take pictures and like film some of our play sessions yeah. um, and do teasers for our partners yeah the next one is restraints, cuffs, and other enjoyable things. It connects in with bondage. Her favorite are my realistic handcuffs, which were not the easiest to get a hold of for some people, uh, but you can buy them. They are a double lock cylinder handcuff. Um, her next favorite would be our restraint straps, yeah. which, ironically enough, you don't find in many sex shops because they are not regular restraints. You would find these at a hardware store or in a dollar store like here in Canada, Dollarama. Um, and I will be doing a video specifically about pervertibles, which is things that you can find in stores outside of like a regular sex store um, that you can use in your play. Um, so the next one is butt plugs. Now, I'm not huge into anal um, or anal play, um, so this isn't something that I will do very often or something that is like a must in our dynamic. Right, because also it's also back to what I said about her tail. My tail has a blood plug attached to it, so um, I tend not to wear it for that reason. Yeah. Um, the next one is biting. Um, <laughs> We've already gone over this one already. We both enjoy biting. I tend to let her know not to bite me because of the reason for my professionalism manner. So the reason why she has marks of teeth marks on her arm are because of her bite in learning her lesson the hard way. Um, so when it comes, when me biting comes into play is with my other partners. Um, the next one is edging. Um, <laughs> this is, I'm going to let daddy talk about this one. Well, this goes into with part of her rules that we have set up for it. Um, she is not allowed to come with her permission, so I always leave her hanging until I give her the right moment to allow it. So it's something we do all the time. And I guess the final one for today's video will be oral. She loves giving on both aspects. She doesn't like receiving too much because of previous histories, but it's something that we both enjoy doing. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and while well, you're there. Give us a thumbs down. We won't mind. We're, we're not picky. We just want to make sure that this is an educational video for whoever's out there so they can understand the community. And of course, keep your eye out. Hit the bell icon. You'll get notifications of our next posts. And of always, stay true to your kink and we'll see you next week.